Alright guys, uh, I just got my order yesterday for the V-Cube 6 and 7 that I got from vcubes.com. Uh, in case you were wondering, I ordered it on June 24th. And I got it. Packaging is a little beat up. Whoa. Okay, so as the title suggests, this is the 6x6 V-Cube unboxing and review. Uh, we're going to start with the unboxing, of course. Uh, Over the following months, People were receiving and unboxing their brand new V-Cubes. Very quickly, people were amazed. The V-Cube 5 was instantly the best 5x5 on the market, and the V-Cube 6 and 7 were very quickly considered masterpieces of cube engineering. It seemed like V-Cube could do nothing wrong. Soon, the 6x6 and 7x7 were added as official WCA event categories, and people started competing very quickly. As time went on, and people got used to them, people started wondering what the next V-Cube to come out would be. Would it be the V-Cube 8? Or would they do the V-Cube 2 and work up? Many, many people were hoping that a V-Cube 4 would be released, as at the time, a decent 4x4 cube did not exist. What a lot of people didn't consider at the time was that Seven Towns is extremely protective of design trademarks, which made it much harder for V-Cube to easily make anything blow off V-Cube 5. There have been a lot of cases of Seven Towns demanding that Cube stores take inventory down due to alleged trademark violations in the past. This doesn't really happen these days, but they claim that hundreds of millions of unlicensed cubes are seized by customs every year. Whatever the case, V-Cube didn't want to risk it. The V-Cube 4 wasn't going to happen. Instead, in September of 2009, V-Cube released the V-Cube Illusion and the V-Cube Dazzler, which were both V-Cube 7s with different coloured plastic. The reaction within the community was rather... mixed. While some were happy about the new cubes, others were criticising the company for not bringing out anything really new. Nevertheless, the cubes sold reasonably well, and it wasn't a huge issue. After all, it took five years to bring out the first three, who knows how long it'd take until the next one. Then they brought out flag cubes. These were cubes with colour schemes based on European flags, such as Germany, Finland, Russia, and so on. This is probably where the downhill slide started, as no one asked for these cubes, and no one really bought these cubes, and so they languished in the online shop with criticism abound. And then came December 2010. This is uh, Donovan with Lubix Cube. And then Brad, Puzzle Addictions. Um, and we've come across an issue that's taking place right now, uh, primarily on eBay is where this is starting at. Um, I can no longer have the uh, Ultimate Lubix Guhong on eBay uh, because of a claim from Virtus that it is a patent infringement that they have. So after doing VCube had filed a patent infringement claim with PayPal, claiming that the Dion Guhong and the Lingyun were infringements. It went through, and PayPal, as well as eBay, which owned PayPal at the time, started disabling accounts of people selling the cubes and taking down eBay listings. This wasn't the first time they had filed patent infringement claims. The Maru 4x4 had been targeted before, but no one paid much attention since nobody denied it was a knockoff. However, the Dion cubes were incredibly popular at the time, and not many people saw similarities between the cubes and the patent. The Lubix cube shop was hit particularly hard, as apart from Lube, their main product was the ultimate Lubix Guhong, and they were forced to stop selling it. This gave rise to a lot of anger in the community, with many people calling for boycotts of all V-Cube products. On the 1st of January 2011, VCube issued a statement saying that they would pull the patent infringement claim and that sales of Dion and Maru cubes would resume effective immediately. For some people, however, it was too little too late. The VCube brand had been tarnished in many people's eyes, and they didn't plan to return anytime soon. The final nail in the coffin came with the release of the VCube 3 little over a year later. This was a cube that many people claimed had pieces that were extremely similar to the Dion Guhong, but when Crazy Bad Cuba started asking about this on their Facebook page, the representative came off as rude, sidestepped the questions, and ended up deleting all the comments regarding the cube. V-Cube still exists today, of course. The company currently has cubes ranging from the V-Cube 2 all the way up to the V-Cube 8, and they recently announced the release of the V-Cube 9 on their Facebook page. However, they aren't anywhere near as popular today. 
They mostly sell their cubes in retail stores and don't target the speed cubing market. One of their biggest services is the Create Your Cube site, where someone can get custom pictures printed directly onto the cube, but even this is somewhat controversial. In any case, it seems very unlikely that they will ever regain the highs that they had several years ago. The cubing community has moved on, and VCube didn't come from the ride.